Allow me to ask you to start with a small visualization. Let's imagine a researcher, a literary historian. Let's imagine that she is preparing a critical edition of the short stories of Dejo Kostolanyi, a Hungarian writer who lived at the beginning of the 20th century. For this very reason, her first choice is a short story. The title of the short story is Aurelia's Day and was published in a weekly newspaper. At least, that's what she believes. Then it turns out to her that the short story was published under two other titles during the author's lifetime. She does not despair, let's imagine. However, during her research work, she realized that the greater part of the author's oeuvre can be found in periodicals because he lived partially from journalism. She was suspect that she may be dealing with more variants than she thought. Finally, she realizes that there are 23 publications of the text available. Yeah. <laughs> 23 variants of a single short story. Of course, not all of them are really text variants that will be provided with critical notes in the critical edition, but in theory, it would be possible. And as much as I'd like to, I can't say it's a definitive number. In what direction can this researcher go if she wants to process this large number of variants in a modern way? Before I answer this question, let's look at the history of my story. When the critical edition of Dejo Kostelanyi's works began, at the first phase of the philological work, we wanted to collect and catalog the works published during Kostelanyi's life and their various appearances. This means the text published in the printed press in addition to manuscripts. The period when Kostolanyi published can be considered to be between 1903 and 1936. So the research work focused on this time interval. We looked at the newspapers from Budapest, from the countryside and from across the border and the collected data were continuously published in the bibliography. Quantitatively, we encountered an unexpected amount of data. The six volumes of the bibliography currently contain data in the order of 11,000 items. We also found countless previously unknown works by Kostolanyi, in addition to a large number of unknown texts. In accordance with Kostolanyi's publishing practice, several works were published even years later with the same title in another journal, but in a slightly different version or the same work was published decades later with a completely different title. Accordingly, the Kostolanyi bibliography consists of elements that build on each other. However, the printed uh, bibliography scrolled a huge amount of data in front of it, starting from the third volume. As you can already perceive from these few informations, the data, data structure we faced was destined for network. The challenge, what was that uh, we did not know how to create this network. We wanted to see something. We had a vision of what we wanted to see, which we also recorded in complicated Excel tables, but we had not yet found the final solution. ET Data, which is one of the projects of the Institute of Li uh, Literary Studies of the Humanities Research Center, is implemented in the framework of the G DigiPhil project and is suitable for storing exactly this kind of data and this kind of relationships. From two, 2017, in cooperation with the DigiFilm group, we started working on the Koha library system. Yeah, it's very simple. <laughs> the system worked, but it had some shortcomings. However, it should be noted that despite all its rigidity, Koha created the structure that we wanted to preserve in the future. This was therefore a very important station from the point of view of the project. From the end of 2021, we started developing the specification in Wikibase based ET data. It was important during the design to create a multilingual database that can also be used for international projects. Our basic expectation is that elements have Hungarian as well English labels and descriptions. So the database can also be used for a Frasian researcher. Already in the initial phase of ET data, the decision was made that we will work with properties of Wikidata 
More precisely, as far as possible, and each project allows, we're trying to bring Wikidata's properties closer to the property set of Wikidata. Currently, 170 properties are available in the database, but due to the project joining, this constantly expanding. Thanks to Sparkle acquiries, as you could already see in Adam Shevestian's presentation, we can access visualizations and groupings that can be specifically help organize such a large data set. Let's look, for example, at the places of publication of the aforementioned short story, Aurelia's Day. What information can we get with this help of this? As can you uh, be seen from the map, Kostolanyi's text reached many places. Now here is a side question as to how, obviously he did not send copies of his manuscript everywhere, but that is really not important now. It is, however, how widely spread the short story in within the country. And if we were to examine, as we will not do now, whether this was a unique phenomenon in the first half of the 20th century, we would come to the conclusion that it was not. To the extent that a literary work published in a printed press is accessible to us today, almost anywhere in the country, at least this is our illusion, the trend was very similar at the beginning of the 20th century. An interesting question for me, for example, how many people read Kostolanyi's short story in Felsővi show? A settlement located in today's Romania where around 900 of its 7,500 inhabitants were Hungarian speakers at that time. In any case, the opportunity was given and this is an interesting information itself. Our other factor is time. When these, uh, these variants appear, if I brought it on a timeline, it is clearly visible that, for example, readers in Loshons and Bekeschaba could pick up the page containing the short story on the same day, the 26th of January, it's on the, it's on the right side, 1911. And these are the records in Wikidata. These are the newspapers. And this is a traffic map from uh, 1911. And I marked uh, Loshons and uh, Bekes Chabonik. And the distance between the two cities is uh, 216 kilometers and the same day. This is one of the simplest examples, but putting all the text variants of a critical edition on a timeline can be really bring new information. Perhaps it is unnecessary to emphasize that these data viewed together serve important information for researchers. We can get closer, not only the critical edition, but also to, for example, the press culture at the beginning of the 20th century and the mode of operation of the press. But let's go further and see what happens if the short story has an other form of appearance. In this case, there are several. Two books of fiction and one volume proofread by the author. In addition, the short story was published in both books. So you have to work with many different types of documents, but they are somehow related to each other. Overall, our main question is, how could these semantic network connections be seen together? To create this kind of connection in ET data, we created a so-called work type record. Here, all connections become visible on one page. The manuscript, the newspaper, uh, publication, the proofread book, the books of the short stories, then the edition after the author's death and the critical edition. Here you can mark the translation of the work or the film or theater performance made from it. In other words, everything we know about a particular work becomes visible on one page and each piece of data has several hierarchies and relations, uh, relationships. There are subordinates and superiors and equal relations. There are stronger ties and there are looser relationship designations. The appearance in the book may be a relationship of subordination. There are plenty of, uh, plenty of examples of a looser relationship in Kostelanyi's works. For example, if he incorporated a feuilleton into a novel or as the editors of the critical edition of the short stories, Zsófia Szilágyi and Julia Citra, uh, She's your sister. <laughs> 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 
decided Aurelia Days has two main texts. So in it.o we could also connect the two work type uh, with the related to property. I would like to stop here for a while and look at the phenomenon I have outlined from a little further. As I may have already mentioned, this semantic pattern is not unique. Certain characteristics, uh, characteristics uh, are of course unique, which clearly indicate Costolani's work method. At the same time, this pattern can be placed both spatially and temporally. We can study the turn of the century, the Hungarian language press or the Hungarian literature. So this partially unique pattern can be integrated into a much wider network with the help of which we can look not only at the phenomena of an oeuvre, but also, for example, of an era. In fact, our previous patterns will be probably be overwritten with such uh, an opportunity. I think what we have described so far as a phenomena or, uh, of an era can be very easily turned out to be actually part of a much longer or broader trend. A good example of this is the project of András Virág, with whom we will soon upload more than a thousand pre-century uh, periodicals, and also books and reviews from 50 persons who lived 100 years ago. From this, I expect that Costolani project will be expanded with additional data, and Andres surely hopes that uh, the Costolani pattern will help build us his as well. So when I talk about the semantic patterns of the Costolani's bibliography, I'm actually talking about the possibilities of something much broader. But how is everything that I have talked about built up? The good thing is that this is not a lonely research work anymore. After all, the theater historian builds this database just like a textologist, bibliographer, or film studies specialist. Let's see how many projects build on each other in ET data. One of the most recent projects uh, that ended a few days ago was importing uh, 276,000 names from a Hungarian namespace. In the course of the work, we corrected data and made numerous groupings and field matching were also necessary. This is the result of several months of work. The imported namespace will be the basis of our projects where na uh, personal names are needed. During their use, it is also possible to improve them by indicating a possible source or even supplementing certain that data. Important uh, data were uh, we imported the namespace, which is the date and the place of birth and death, occupation and identifiers. Other plans include the transfer of kinship relationships. During the selection, identification were uh, certainly present challenges to the scientists, so I expect that the quality of the namespace will increase during use. We obviously currently know the most about Costolani compared to the available sources, so we supplemented it in a great detail compared to the namespace data, expanded the properties, for example, with a list of uh, pseudonyms, and you can see it's a very long list, and it's uh, our data. ET data also operates the bibliography of Hungarian literary history project, which will provide bibliographic data from the 18th century to the beginning of the 20th century. Closely related to this will be a database of the life and the publication of a 19th century Hungarian po a poet, uh, Sándor Petőfi. From this, ex I expect not only the help of each other's data, but is, that is what uh, one person has already uploaded, the other no longer needs, but also that they will be able to supplement each other's records. After the uploading of the costume design of Hungarian theater in Cluj Napoca, I hope for an increased number of pieces of dramatic literature and the semantic network of Peter Hoynutzis Posthumous papers already at the beginning of the work show similarity with some details of Costolani database. Projects using articles will also provide an opportunity for some bibliographic data to be given an alternative explanation. For example, we will certainly think differently about the famous turn of the century journal Nugat if we read the article about its relationship with the avant-garde. So. 
the fact grid operated by historians can be a good example for us as well. Uh, as there, the goal here would be that the various projects could complement each other while at the same time showing their own results. Of course, we also provide the option for the separation. Each project has its own uh, collection properties, so the members of the project uh, the, can take responsibility for the uploaded data. There is an example. Uh, in the case of uh, Costolani bibliography, I insisted that uh, Costolani's books also belong to my project, even though it is obvious that these books are not unique. Uh, their data is available in countless library system. However, the research group dated or redated the publication dates of the books many times, and we take responsibility for this. Another goal could be that, just like on fact grid, we also have the opportunity to enrich data even in such a way that the researchers can upload their um, data, such as person, journals, or bibliographic description of books, even without adding network connections. Let's go back to the lonely researcher visualization at the beginning of my presentation. Perhaps we can imagine that, that in such a research environment, she no longer feels so lonely. She has a lot of help with her work. And I can only hope that despite all the similarities, the difference between the image you saw at the beginning of my presentation and the image shown now can be clearly perceived. Thank you.